brought forth fruit for himself. For himself, it says. As his fruit increased, what did he do with all of this abundance that he was enjoying? It says he built more altars. As his land prospered, what did he do? It says he had adorned his sacred stones. He took all those good gifts that God had given him and he turned them into something ugly. And so we've discussed that before, I think at last week or the week before, that how sometimes we take the blessings of God, the blessings that he gives us, and we use them in ungodly ways. Do you remember? We talked about he gave us wood. He gave us metal. What did we do? We used that metal to hammer nails into a cross. And then we took those, that cross that was made and we hung the Son of God, the very God incarnate, upon that cross where he died for our sins. Those were gifts and we used them against him. Think about it. The brick and mortar he gives us, what do we do? We build idols and worship them. We talked about golden idols. This is what Israel was doing. But we have our own idols today. We take those gifts he gives us and we turn them around and we, we worship them. We worship the gifts, not the giver of the gifts. Oh, that must break his heart. And sometimes we take the liberty of God the liberty that he's given us. And what have we done with that? We use it in ungodly ways. And it says in Galatians 5.13, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. And I think what we as Christians do far too often, myself included, is we indulge the flesh and we know we're forgiven. God was still being good to Israel. Even though, I mean, they were, this, they were living in a time of abundance and blessing. God, this God that we serve, was still giving them blessings. Even though they had really basically turned their back on him. Yet he continued to warn them about judgment. John 15, 1 and 2, where Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Do you remember the picture I put up there of Jesus? He cursed that fig tree so it didn't have fruit on it. God wants us to bear fruit, not to earn his approval, because we're saved if we've trusted in Christ, but he wants us to bear fruit. We do good works. We help our neighbors. We bake bread. We mow their lawns. We, um, whatever it is that we do to make this world a better place, we do it. But that's our fruit. And we're not trying to make it happen. It just happens. We're not doing it to earn anyone's approval, especially God's. And it goes on in, in verse 15, and it says, And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. Verse 2 goes, Their heart is deceitful, and God sees our hearts. And if there is any deceit in our hearts, which there is, he will work on that. He will prune that out of us. He will file it down. And yes, it hurts. Verse 2 says, Their heart is deceitful, and now they must bear their guilt. The Lord will demolish their altars and destroy their sacred stones. These buildings, these, these temples, and all these statues that they were worshiping, God's going to destroy them. He's going to destroy our idols as well, and we talked about that. He'll rip them out of our hands if he has to, not to hurt us, but to prune us, because he loves us. Well, Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? 
Do you know, ladies, we don't even know our own hearts. We don't know our own hearts. And like David, we have to pray, Lord, show me if there be any wicked way in me. If there be any offensive way in me. I don't want to offend. I don't, and you know what, we might offend people. We might have to. It might come down to that, where someone's offended because especially when we use this book, if we quote scripture or, or even a, talk about a biblical principle, that might offend somebody. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about offending the one true God. And Lord, if there is any offensive way in me, any way that offends you, anything in me that makes you, Lord, feel brokenhearted, anything that makes you feel jealous, anything that hurts you, Lord, Will you open my eyes to that? Reveal it to me. That's what David prayed. And that's why he sent Jesus. Because he saw our depraved state. Okay, so it, the Israelites were going down on feast days. And they were worshiping God. They did not discontinue doing that. And we can put ourselves in their place. We also go to church. We worship God, right? But then... They would come up out of that feast day, and what would they do? They'd turn around and go worship them. How do we conduct ourselves through the week? We go to church, we, we're, you know, good little Christians. We smile at everybody, and we walk in with our Bibles and sing our songs. But how do we treat people during the week? What do we bow down to during the week? I tend to feel very um, indignant toward those Israelites. Oh, look at those people. How could they be like that? But you know what? I'm no different. God help me. I don't want a divided heart. James, in uh, James 1.8, he talks about that. He said, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded woman is unstable in all her ways. If we stand and sing praises to God on Sunday morning, and then we walk out the door and we live like the devil all week, heaven help us. And so that's something that God would have each one of us think about. We're not going to do life perfectly. But he, it's just a revelation as to why Jesus died because ladies we can't do it we can't let's just admit that right now and get over it <laughs> we need Jesus we need the Spirit of God living inside of us bearing his fruit in and, out, and through us out into the world verse 20 to be under judgment this is what Hosea is warning them about they did not like Hosea, we talked about this last week. He was not a popular dude, was he? It's like, who does he think he is? Everything's going great. We are, we're living abundantly. And here is this crazy man over here telling us all this bad stuff. And he was not very well liked. But yet he was speaking truth because he was speaking God's word. And if someone is going to be offended by anything we say from God's word, that's unfortunate. I would pray we would always say it with love. But, but we are his mouthpiece, ladies. How will they hear, it says in Romans, unless someone tells them, unless there's a preacher. We're preachers. I don't necessarily consider myself a preacher, but anyone that shares the good news of Jesus Christ. And is it, is it our responsibility to bring people to the Lord? It's our responsibility to speak the, the truth. Speak it out in love. And then who does the increase? Who reaps that? It's the Holy Spirit. But we work in partnership. Can you believe it? That the God of heaven works in and through each one of us we work, we work together with His Holy Spirit. How incredible is that? 
oh, he, he must value us highly. And that just thrills my heart.